December 28th, 9.51 a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. This is it. Judgment Day. Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about roleplay games and today we're going to be playing Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and got assaulted by Manfred Von Karma after we pretty much revealed that he's sort of been a mastermind behind all of this using Yogi, the old man, to carry out the murder and get revenge on Miles Edgeworth and Robert Hammond. Quite a lot of stuff happened last time, so if you didn't watch it, go do that now. I don't know why you're watching this one if you haven't watched that one. Anyways, in this episode, this is the final trial of both this case and of this Let's Play series I'm going to be doing. I already posted an explanation in the description of one of my previous videos. I'll go ahead and repost the explanation in this description as well. So if you're confused, just go ahead and look down there. And of course, I'll do the fifth case of this game sometime way in the future. Uh, but for now, this will be the final trial of the final case of this series. This is it. Judgment Day. Today, things are going to get settled at last. A lot of things. Wah! What's the big idea? S sorry, Nick. I only touched your shoulder. I guess the shock still hasn't worn off from my run-in with the stun gun yesterday. Anyhow, today's the last day of the trial. Good luck, Nick. Yeah, thanks, Maya. Edgeworth is looking glum as always. I hope Von Karma doesn't push him too hard. Whoa! What are you doing? Sorry, I'm sorry. I just thought I'd cheer you up with a pat on the back. Maya, maybe you should go outside and discharge. Right, good idea. Why not to electrocute anyone on your way out? Whoa, yeah, pal! What's gotten into that girl? Detective Gumshoe. Morning, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, good morning. How did it go, Detective? Have no fear. As promised, I've captured our runaway caretaker. I just brought him in. Took all night, pal. Thanks, Detective Gumshoe. You must be tired. Actually, after that shock I just got on my way in, I feel pretty good. Yogi says he's forgotten his own name. But that has to be a lie. Why would he want revenge on Edgeworth if he couldn't remember his past? He does remember, and I'm going to prove it. December 28th, 10 o'clock AM, District Court, courtroom number three. Court is now in session for the trial of Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, your honor. The prosecution is ready. Uh, right, very well. We have reached the final day of our proceedings in this trial. I ask that the prosecution submit decisive evidence. Understood. Come on, don't be awed into silence by every little thing he says. Very well, Mr. Von Karma. Your opening statement. Right. Thanks to Detective Gumshoe's efforts, the boat rental shop caretaker has been arrested. In yesterday's trial, the defense asserted that the caretaker was the murderer. However, the caretaker has yet to confirm this. I would like to ask the defense to cross-examine him as much as necessary. Very well. Please bring the witness to the courtroom. Ladies and gentlemen of the court, I believe you all remember our witness. He lives in the boat rental shop on the lake from where he witnessed the incident. In addition, he has currently lost memory of his name and identity. Witness, why did you run away, away yesterday? The witness was not running away, as he will now testify. I, I see. Very well, please begin your, your testimony. <laughs> Why I left court. Uh, I'm really sorry about just leaving like I did. But I wasn't running away or nothing. I uh, went to buy some food for Polly, you see. 
I figured I got nothing to do with this incident anyhow. I mean, I need to have one of those motor things, right? And I don't got those. So my testimony yesterday at the same statue. Hmm, very well. Let's begin the cross-examination, shall we? He has to know his name. Yanni Yogi. You're Yanni Yogi, and I'm going to prove it. Or Yanni Yogi, however you pronounce it. Why I left court? I'm really sorry about just leaving yesterday like I did. I call what you did running away and not just leaving. You heard Larry's testimony and realized you were in danger. Now, Mr. Wright, there's no need to rush to conclusions. As I said, the witness was not running away. Listen to the testimony. He sure seems relaxed. In fact, they both do. Von Karma and Yanni Yogi. But I wasn't running away, you nothing. Then why did you leave? He's just about to say why. Is it so hard for you to just quietly listen when someone is talking? If I sat quietly, Edgeworth would be guilty in three minutes. I, uh, went to buy some food for Polly, see? Food? Well, Polly is a bit of a gourmand, you see? She only eats these high quality bird pellets from France. You only have them in the big pet shop downtown. But you weren't arrested until this morning. Why didn't you go back to the caretaker shack? Uh, well, I kind of got lost, you see. The witness has trouble remembering things sometimes. When the police apprehended him, he was on his way back to the shack. Yeah, right. Nice try, Von Karma. No one's going to believe that. Hmm, I see. So he was lost. Please, Your Honor, come to your senses. I figured I got nothing to do with this incident anyhow. You've lost much of your memory, is that correct? Uh, yep. Seems like it. Then how could you know that you didn't have anything to do with this incident? Uh. Or... Or maybe you're lying about not having your memory, hmm? You know exactly who you are. The witness has testified quite clearly that he has no idea who he is. If you claim he's lying, then show the court proof. Ugh. How am I supposed to prove what's going on in that old codger's head? It's impossible. Hmm. I've gla I'm glad you've come to your senses, Mr. Wright. Very well, witness. Please continue. Uh, I mean, I need one of those motor things, right? And I don't got one. How can you say you had no motive? I say you do. You had a grudge against Edgeworth and the victim, Robert Hammond. That's why you took revenge on them, right? Please don't make me repeat myself, Mr. Wright. This witness has no memory of anything beyond several years ago. He can't hold a grudge. It's impossible. I have to prove he's lying about his memory. Otherwise, it's going to be the same thing over and over until the trial ends. Might I say something, Mr. Wright? Yes. Yes, Your Honor? You've been saying the same thing now over and over. You've been calling the witness's memory of the past, or... Lack thereof into question. But does this really have anything to do with the current case? Of course, Your Honor. The witness has said he has nothing to do with this case and no motive. Both of these statements are lies. Order, order. Mr. Wright, there is a serious problem with your claim. Or are you saying, are you saying you know who this witness is? Of course, Your Honor. Oh, now this is interesting. I would like to know myself. So, who is he? Don't play dumb, Von Karma. Mr. Wright, please tell me, tell us what the witness's name is. 
His name is Yanni Yogi, a former court bailiff. Yogi. That name seems familiar. Oh, Yanni Yogi from the DL6 incident. I thought the judge would have heard of it. It was such a famous case. But what does this mean? Your Honor, if this man is Mr. Yogi, then he has a clear motive. Tisk tisk tisk. Jumping to conclusions again, Mr. Wright. This man, this witness is Yo Yanni Yogi? Fascinating. However, how do you propose to prove this to the court? This is a court of law, as you may recall. You need proof. And allow me to repeat once more that the witnesses the witness has lost his memory. This is it. I have to do this now. If I can't prove his yogi right here, right now, then I've got nowhere else to go. Nick, how are you going to prove it? How could you prove that he's Yanni Yogi? It's okay. It's actually quite simple. Your Honor, please take this man's fingerprints. Then we'll compare them to the fingerprints on the file for Yanni Yogi 15 years ago. I see. That makes sense. Tisk tisk tisk. Huh? I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. Why? The witness has no fingerprints. What? What? No fingerprints? Uh, you see, before I worked as a caretaker, I worked at a chemical plant. I burn my fingers working with the stuff. Yup. What? Yogi, you sneak. You burned your fingerprints off to hide your past. Hmm. Well, if the witness has no fingerprints, I guess we will not be able to prove its identity. No. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Well, what will you do, Mr. Wright? Uh. Hmm. It seems that the case has been decided, no? No. I know what happened. I know everything. I... I just can't prove it. But no. I can't let it end like this. I can't lose. There has to be another way. There is no one who can testify as to who this witness is. No one. Nick, what are we going to do? I didn't even consider that he might have erased his fingerprints. What do I do? Tsk, tsk, tsk. Well, Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to cross-examine the parrot for a little comic relief, hmm? Yeah, yeah, very funny. You're a sore winner, Von Karma. Wait a second. Cross-examine the parrot? What is it, Nick? No. You're not going to... Your Honor! The defense would like to take Mr. Von Karma up on his proposal. Take Mr. Von Karma up? On his proposal? Exactly, Your Honor. I would like to cross-examine the witness's pet parrot. Order. Order. Uh, well, what do you think, Mr. Von Karma? Need you even ask? This is a farce. I object. Wait a second. You were the one who suggested I cross-examine the parrot, Von Karma. I have a right to do as you suggested. Mph. Well, if you're so desperate, then please be my guest. Of course, should you go through with this, and nothing comes of it, then I hope you're ready for the consequences. Nick, this is crazy. Well, still want to go through with your little game? Let the parrot take the stand. I will cross-examine her, Your Honor. This is the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard. Von Karma's rigged every person's testimony, every piece of evidence. Except the parrot. She's my last chance. At least, I think so. Bailiff, bring in the parrot. That's quite a bird. 
Please tell us your name. Name. The witness is ignoring me. It must hurt to be ignored by a bird. Ahem. Very well, witness. Who is your owner? Please uh, testify for us. Who is your owner? Hmm. Certainly the most concise testimony we've had so far. Very well, begin your cross-examination. Right. What are you going to do, Nick? I... I don't know. What do we do, Maya? Hmm. I don't know if you could hear it, but I have the biggest smile on my face right now because... <laughs> this is probably one of the best moments in Ace Attorney. Who is your owner? Hello! Hello! Squawk! Witness! You can't just say hello and expect us to get anywhere. I want you to testify. Maya, you talk to her. Right, uh, what do I say? Remember, two days ago. Polly, Polly, have we forgotten something? Squawk! Don't forget, DL6! Squawk! If I can get Polly to say that here, I'll prove that the caretaker had something to do with DL6. Um, Polly, have we forgotten something? Hello! Hello! Squawk! That's not what you're supposed to say. Forgot! Something we forgot! Hello! Hello! Squawk! Uh-oh. It's not working, Nick. She won't say it. It's ridiculous. Why won't she say it? Tsk, tsk, tsk. Something the matter, Mr. Wright? Wait. Don't tell me Juan Karma expected this. He couldn't have retrained the parrot. Or could he? Did he train her not to respond when we asked if we'd forgotten anything? Witness, you're here to speak. You must speak to me. Frankly, I can't believe that you're speaking to the parrot. Well, I guess we should try to get some information out of her. We need to show the judge that her owner is Mr. Yogi. Hello! Hello! Squawk! And we said all that again. So the next thing is, what's your name? Maybe I should get her to say her name. Polly, Polly, what's your name? Polly, Polly, Squawk! M Mr. Wright, I think we've established that this parrot is named Polly. Does this have anything to do with Aroni's identity? Yes, it does. Ha, huh. fascinating. You claim that the parrot's name will prove her owner's identity? Then show us this proof. Nick, don't you think you're taking the bluffing a little too far? Listen, we're not here to answer the question of who is the caretaker. We're here to prove that he is Yanni Yogi. All we have to do is tie the, the name Polly to Yogi. Your Honor, the proof that the parrot's name reveals the caretaker's identity is... A DL6 case file? That's quite a large file you have there. Which page is this proof on, then? Show us or stop wasting our time. Hmm. Very well, Mr. Wright, please show us the page. Where in this file is the information connected to the parrot's name? It's on the suspect data page. This page is all the information about Yanni Yogi. Right after he was arrested, his fiance committed suicide, see? Hmm, indeed, it does say that, yes. What was his fiancé's name? Polly Jenkins. Polly! Exactly, Your Honor. He remembered the name of his fiancé who committed suicide. That's why he named his parrot after her. I see. I guess that is possible. Bah, a mere coincidence, that's all. 
My granddaughter has a dog she calls Phoenix. Well, Mr. Phoenix Wright, does that make you my granddaughter's fiance? She's only seven years old. Hmm, indeed. Alone, it is, lit it is a little weak for evidence in a murder trial. You would need some other corroborating evidence. Where am I going to find that? Nick, we're getting closer. One more. If we can just get one more piece of evidence. Right. But what? Hmph. Very well, witness. You may continue. So our last piece of evidence over here is... The safe number. Maybe I'll get her to say this number of the safe. Huh? The safe? Why? Let's just try to get her to say anything, okay? Polly, what was the number on the safe in the shack? 1228! 1228! My, what a reckless parrot. Well, Mr. Wright, you aren't claiming that this number has something to do with the caretaker? Actually, it does. That's why I had her, I had her say it. Ha! Huh. Ridiculous. How can the number to a safe tell us who the caretaker is? Show us your proof. What could possibly link this number to the caretaker's true identity? The DL6 case file? What is this obsession you have with that case? Mr. Wright, where in this, ca in this file is something related to the safe number? It's on the case summary page. The case summary? Specifically the date on which DL6 the DL6 incident occurred. The date of the incident? December 28th. Why, that's today's date, 15 years ago. And the number on that safe is 1228. Ah! He used the date of the DL6 incident as the number for his safe, Your Honor. That's how important that date was to him. I see. It certainly is an interesting coincidence. People often do set their secret numbers to dates. Bah. This is not tangible proof. I set my ATM card's number to 0001 because I am number one. This has nothing to do with a date. Nothing. That's enough. I think we've reached a conclusion here. This is a mere coincidence. That's all. True, that is a possibility. However, two coincidences at the same time seems more like a pattern to me. Ooh, what are you saying? Summon the caretaker of the boat shop. Immediately. Witness, tell us your name. Wait. This witness, he doesn't remember. No, it, it's okay. I've accomplished what I wanted to do. I'm done. Nick, he looks totally different. This is the real Yogi, I think. Finally. He's been acting feeble to hide his true identity. Acting for 15 years. Well, let me ask you again. Please state your name for the court. My name is Yanni Yogi. Fifteen years ago, I served as a bailiff in this very court. Oh, order, order. Yanni Yogi. So, was it you who killed Robert Hammond? And tried to frame Miles Edgeworth for his death? Yes, it was me. I did it. You put me on the witness stand 15 years ago. Robert Hammond, he said I was mentally unsound. He told me it would make me innocent, get me off the hook. So I pretended to have brain damage. I was innocent, really, but he didn't believe me. He won the trial, but I lost everything. I lost my job, my fiancé, my social standing. And this year, 15 years later, our package arrived. It was a letter and a pistol. The plan was written out in careful detail. It was a plan for me to take my revenge on the people who ruined my life. I didn't care who sent it. I thought this was my chance. After 15 years, this was it. 
Finally, a chance to have my revenge on Robert Hammond and Miles Sudworth. I have no regrets. Wait a moment. Revenge against Miles Edgeworth? What do you mean? I'm not at liberty to speak on that matter. Why don't you ask Mr. Edgeworth yourself? Anyway, I'll admit it. I was the one who killed Robert Hammond. On Karma, where is Mr. Yogi? Under arrest, Your Honor. I saw no room for error in his confession. Then the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, is innocent. In this case, at least. Hmm. Very well. Will the defendant please take the stand? There are a few mysteries left unsolved. Still, you are cleared of suspicion for this particular case. So I would like to pass judgment on the murder of Mr. Robert Hammond. Any objections? I don't believe it. Why isn't Von Karma saying anything? Very well. The court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Not guilty. That is all. The court is adjourned. Objection! Did someone just say objection? It wasn't Von Karma. Wait, but that means... No. Edgeworth? Your Honor, I object to your judgment. What do you mean? I'm not innocent at all. As we have heard, Yanni Yogi killed Robert Hammond in revenge. But revenge for what? Nick! Edgeworth is trying to confess. He's going to say he's guilty. He's going to tell them he was the murderer in the DL6 incident. He's going to tell them he killed his own dad. Uh-oh. What do I do? The judgment has already been passed. I object to Edgeworth's outburst. Didn't something like this happen yesterday, too? I believe a certain witness raised an objection after a guilty verdict was passed. That would be Larry. We must hear this new witness, this new statement. We must hear Miles Edgeworth. He's right. We have a duty to hear Mr. Edgeworth out. For 15 years, I have had a recurring dream. A nightmare. It's only a nightmare. That's what I told myself. But now, I know it wasn't a dream. Yanni Yogi wasn't the killer. You mean in the incident where your father died? From the distance of the shot, it wasn't a suicide either. Everything was as clear as day. The murderer, the criminal in the DL6 incident. It was me. Your Honor, I confess my guilt. I am guilty for DL6, the statute of limitations of which ends today. The culprit is me. Order, order. This is certainly unexpected. The defendant declared innocent is confessing to a different crime. A crime for which the statute of limitations runs out today. I'm not really sure how I should deal with this. Bah, it's obvious. We hold a trial right here, right now. We try this man for his crime of 15 years ago. I think, I think I would like to have a five minute recess. During this time, I will consider the appropriate course of action to take. Court is adjourned. December 28th. 2.24 p.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. I'm sorry, Wright. I've just wasted all of your effort. Mr. Edgeworth! I don't- I just don't believe it, pal! I mean, you... kill your dad? I didn't want to believe it myself, Detective. But it's the truth. I deserve to be punished. Murder is murder no matter what the circumstances. This is crazy! Just crazy! Nick? What are you doing? Huh? Oh, 
I was just reading through the court record once more. I'm getting my case ready. Your case? What? Huh? Isn't it obvious? It'll prove that Miles Edgeworth is innocent. What are you talking about, pal? He just admitted it. He confessed that he ki he did it in court. I'm sorry, Edgeworth, but I don't believe your nightmare. What? It's just that it's just a dream. It's not real. The truth is right here in the court record. In any case, tighten your belts. The real fight is just beginning. I'll prove you're innocent. Trust me. R right. And we'll have to prove that he's innocent in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. In the next episode, we're going to go ahead and finish off Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Next week on Monday is definitely going to be the finale. So stay tuned and strap in because we are about to solve a 15-year-old murder. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.